preface to talking about how we're going to use the bison. I want to make something very clear. The bison is a bad weapon. Like, really, really bad. Maybe if the bison had its hitboxes fixed or its projectile speed increased to a somewhat decent degree, or maybe it didn't always have its damage be neutered by 60%, or 66, or whatever it was, then maybe, no. It would most certainly be a well-balanced side grade to the stock shotgun. However, we don't live in a just and perfect universe. We don't live in a universe where the Pomson and the Bison have faster projectiles. Nor do we live in a universe where bringing up politics at Thanksgiving doesn't result in the death penalty. So I'm going to go over the stats quickly, and then we can talk about strategy. The funny gun, aka the righteous bison, does not require ammo. The projectile penetrates enemy targets, as said in the last video. The projectile cannot be deflected, which I see as pretty good, as Soldier, the class that is able to use this weapon, struggles against another class that can send projectiles back at their team. So, having a weapon that can't be reflected is a pretty good thing for them. However, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about what happens later. And the projectile deals only 20% less damage to buildings. Looking good so far, Bison. Good job. But we know how this story plays out. We've read it a thousand times. A funny little thing that the producers at Valve have created for a select few weapons in TF2 are hidden stats. These are statistics about weapons or tools that have hidden attributes that are not listed when reviewing the weapon, and the bison has many of these. Hidden stats. To start off, we've got a positive, and one positive. It's got a slightly faster firing speed, but then we get into the negatives. It has a 33% clip reduction compared to the stock shotgun, which has six shots, and the bison only has four. It fires an incredibly slow projectile that even a sumo wrestler chained to an anchor could avoid. It has a f slower firing rate than the stock shotgun. It deals substantially less damage than the stock shotgun. With all these negative hidden attributes to the bison, there is one single positive hidden stat other than the one mentioned before. That hidden stat is the immense respect for the weapon's use in-game. When someone sees you using the bison, they immediately begin to respect you. Warning, respect levels and results may vary from player to player. This is not an actual hidden stat. This is a bit, it's supposed to be funny. It's a secondary. Now that we have assessed the stats, written in the description, and the hidden ones, how should we utilize this piece of scientific trash? To start the assessment of our strategy, I should preface this with my feelings on the bison as a weapon. As I said earlier, I think it's bad. Like, really bad, as I said. Using any other secondary would allow you to more effectively win the video game. But we are not here to win. If you're here to win, you should not be watching this. What are you doing? We are here to use the funny and epic gun. We are here to get funny and epic bison kills. So how do we use the bison? How do we how do we get these funny kills? Well, the bison has a huge advantage over the equally terrible brother, the Pomson 6000. The Pomson, used by the engineer, is a primary, and the bison is a secondary weapon. If you try to use the bison as a primary, don't, you are going to experience the most painful, hellish realm of torture and pain ever felt by a human being on Earth, other than Jesus. So, as a secondary weapon, we need to find a good primary weapon to pair this thing with. One that can deal good damage, but not fully take out our enemies. One that can keep their health low enough so that we can sneak in those funny little bison shots. Primary options. The stock rocket launcher. Ah, yes. Stock. The simplest option. Most effective for what a soldier needs to do. And great for mobility. And with the bison? 
Yeah, it's good. Just good. Good damage. Good splash damage. Gets kills and leaves enemies on low health if you just dump your clip. Sneak in a bison shot and you'll probably get a kill or two on the players you already shot. It's a good pick. Uh, solid like 9 out of 10. The direct hit. As a secondary weapon, the bison is best used when you're out of ammo with your primary or need to deal a small amount of damage without reloading your primary weapon. The direct hit has an increase to its base damage, meaning that enemies who would be living on a small amount of health would be taken care of by the increased damage. However, getting bison air shots is pretty swag, and air shots, or at least bouncing your enemies into the air, is pretty easy to do with the direct hit as it's got increased damage. I would think that this is a... 6.5 out of 10. In reality, you probably won't be switching to your secondary too often while using the direct hit, but you do sometimes when you choke all your shots. Or beef. The airstrike. I feel as if these two don't work well together. When using the airstrike, you're going to be using the airstrike primarily. It's widely considered a good idea to run a type of supportive secondary weapon, like a banner, or, well, a banner, <laughs> while you're using the airstrike. Since you begin to increase your clip, the more kills you get with the airstrike, which is also another reason why you don't need a secondary weapon, because you'll be firing eight rockets out of a single weapon. You don't really need a secondary form of damage. So, in reality, it's probably a 5 out of 10. Maybe 4.5, just to beat that in, but yeah, it, it's an okay, you can still use it, I'm not saying you shouldn't, and if you really want to, go right ahead, if there's some interesting strategy you found, then use it, but in my personal opinion, it's just not really the best to use with it, so yeah, 4.5 out of 10, I guess. The Liberty Launcher. The Liberty Launcher is a pretty good option. This would probably be your best bet if you are mainly going for the Bison kills, as the reduced damage of the Liberty Launcher gives you more options to sneak in those Bison kills. And since you're doing less damage, they are going to have more health. However, with that extra 5th rocket, you can just keep pounding damage into them. And even though it's decreased, that's kind of the best part is you'll be able to switch to your bison and get a kill with it, rather than just outright taking them out with the Liberty Launcher. So I would give this actually a 9.5 out of 10. A lot of the footage that I recorded is me using the Liberty Launcher with the bison. So yeah, 9.5 out of 10. Uh, maybe even a 10 out of 10. And on the opposite side of the spectrum, the Rocket Jumper. No. No. No, never, never, never again. No, no, never again. No, 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 never again. No. No. Like I said before, you go for only bison kills, you are going to have a terrible, terrible time. Don't do it. This is for your mental health. And mine. I had to use this thing for a bit. I probably spent maybe 10, 20 minutes using these two weapons together. You can't even call the rocket jumper a weapon. I used these two things together, and I did not have a fun time. See, the rocket jumper does no damage. It's supposed to be a practice jumper, a, a tool to help you develop your, uh, I guess, what would you say, like muscle memory when it comes to rocket jumping? Just to get the basics, because when you rocket jump, you will take self-damage, because you're literally shooting your feet with a rocket to propel yourself into the air. But the rocket jumper, it does no damage. So it also means it does no damage to you. It's designed for practice and to teach you how to do it in the first place. So don't, don't do this. Don't. It's not going to be fun. Zero out of ten. Don't do it. The original. Refer to stock. The original's just a reskin and or redesign of the stock rocket launcher. The original actually comes from Quake, the game that I believe Team Fortress 2 originated from. I believe Team TF2 was a mod of Quake. So, 
pretty interesting stuff. The black box. The black box generally feels slower than the other launchers, as the one less rocket prevents you from playing aggressively like you can with the other rocket launchers. Other than, well, you know, the rocket jumper, but... Yeah. Gotta get the toxicity out. Okay, no more rocket jumper. It's black box time. Okay. The bison is quite the opposite of aggression as well, so it kind of goes well, but you're probably better off using a banner when you're using the black box. However, the black spot... However, the black box does benefit from a secondary form of damage, no matter if it's a shotgun or the bison. So, what does this mean? The black box is okay. A, a lot of things when using the bison are okay, because the bison's a secondary. We're not mainly using the secondary, we're mainly using the primary. There, that's the reason why it's, it's got names like that. Primary. Primary. It's the main one. Secondary. Second. It's the second one. But having any form of secondary weapon with the black box, well, it, it's it's going to help you. I'd, I'd say it's probably uh, an 8 out of 10, maybe a 7.5 out of 10. It, it, it's good. It's a good option. But you're probably better off running stock, as in like stock shotgun or something else. Maybe a banner. Because the black box, the black box is a slower weapon, but so is the bison. So it's a, a good pick, good pick. I'm repeating the same stuff. Good pick. Anyways, moving on. The Cow Mangler 5000. I've always wanted to say it like that. Like the original, I would suggest referring to stock. And uh, yeah, uh, interesting thing to note: you can't fight engineer buildings. You can't fight sentries. You can't fight anything since both the Cow Mangler and the Bison have a 20% reduced. Uh, damage to building stat. Oh, and I almost forgot about the charge shot of the cow mangler. Yeah, uh, if you hold right click while using the cow mangler, it will fire a large laser torpedo looking thing that, when hitting an enemy or hitting them with their splash damage, will deal a. I think it's mini crit damage. It will deal mini critical damage and light your enemy on fire. So, uh, yeah. If your enemy's running in a straight line to a health pack, just uh, fire the bison down that hallway and it'll catch him real good. The Beggar's Bazooka. Not a big fan of this option, I'm going to be honest. The chaotic nature of the Beggar's goes well with a banner, especially the Conqueror. To keep the destruction and chaos going, since the Beggar draws its rockets from the re reserve ammo other than a clip of four shots, you don't really need a secondary form of damage, since having 20 rockets and being able to just keep pressing your finger against the left click and just fire out 20 rockets. So, yeah, I'd say that's a 3 out of 10. Strategy. Now that we have looked over the weapons at our disposal, what is our strategy to turn the bison from a toy gun to the space pistol it is? We are going to need to play to the bison's strengths in order to use it, but what are its strengths, exactly? Well, the projectile is slow as molasses, but it is consistent in its movement and direction, unlike shotguns when bloom and random bullet spread is active. So, long-range spam is actually a good option. If an enemy is in your sightline and does not have the range to deal with you, example, a pyro, or, I don't know, maybe... Uh, demo man, maybe? Um, rather than just wasting your primary ammo and taking that risk of them surfing off your splash damage and right into your face, we can fire the bison in their general direction and hopefully scare them off. If they're chasing you down, you can also try doing that too. It does sometimes works as well. If they get too close, use your rocket launcher of choice. And I have to remind you that the bison is a secondary. I really want to pound this point into the pavement. Also, wonderful alliteration, I know. Thank you. But it, I'm, I'm being serious. The bison is a secondary weapon, and this is one of the most important parts. The bison isn't held back by the fact of other weapons that they're primaries and they're your main source of damage. This is not your main source of damage. This is a form of damage designed to assist you in need. And to be funny, but you know what I mean. For those who play Combo Soldier, where you fire a rocket and then 
look at the guy up into the sky or go for an air shot or switch to your shotgun or secondary of choice that's related to combat other than the bison, you'll probably be fine using this combo bison play style. It's going to get a it's going to take a little bit of time to get used to since the projectile speed, but you'll be landing those funny bison air shots soon enough. Another interesting way to use this is while retreating. Since the laser sticks around for a while and is a serious threat if someone is walking in a straight line, an escape is possible while spamming the bison. That's, that's pretty good. There isn't really a crazy and new strategy to using the bison, but there are quite a few different ways we can use it. But most of these methods are just spam the bison from far away and pray that it hits an enemy. That's what I would be saying if I hadn't played with the bison so much. My success with the bison. Recently, as you probably could see, or have looked at my channel at all, I have been streaming TF2 while I'm using the bison to gain footage for these videos. And while recording, I think I may have mastered the power of the bison. I somehow have managed to consistently get kills with the bison and obtain a small sized set of kill streaks with the bison. Okay, here's the strat. Just play around with your primary, and when you get the chance, fire the bison while the enemy is currently retreating to a health pack or back to their team. Since the laser is so slow, enemies will try walking back to a safe position, and you can punish them accordingly by firing the laser across their path or trajectory, and eventually, your enemy gamers will just walk right into the laser. Little tidbit of extra info, disrespecting the bison and the user immediately cripples the enemy's confidence when you blast their remains into the ether. Multi-hit hitboxes. To quickly touch up on the most difficult part of the weapon, the projectile, the bison's projectile has multiple hitboxes, meaning that players can be hit multiple times with one shot, and the damage can rack up when you hit your enemy at just the right angle, and it just, oh, it just keeps hitting them. And other times, it just does a pitiful 21 or 18 damage. Okay. While I was collecting footage, I managed to get the bison's hitboxes to line up so well that damage like this would be possible. We did it! We got two! Oh, that makes two kills. Two bison kills. And yes, past me, you did see that right. The bison did just do 84 damage to that soldier who I had done no damage to previously and just materialized in front of my face. This weapon is weird, man. I don't know how to feel about it. Sometimes it's useless, and other times it makes me question the consistency of the stock shotgun compared to the immense strength of the bison. Conclusion and final thoughts. In the end, the bison is funny. And as a hidden stat of the bison, this is not a hidden stat by the way, this is a joke, you gain plus 100% respect from your enemy when you use the bison unironically and get a kill. But seriously, while I have been on this adventure of using the bison, I have begun to appreciate the simplicity and complexity of the Righteous Bison and weapon combos in Team Fortress 2. This weapon is an adventure, and using it is like taking a journey across the universe, trying to find an answer to a question that you don't even know. The funny gun is very funny, and I have had a lot of fun using it, and my thoughts on it have changed greatly. Before making this video, when I would play Soldier, the bison was never an option. It was a useless spot in my backpack that I would consider deleting 90% of the time. But now, when I choose my loadouts, the bison is an actual choice when it comes to secondary weapons. Once you get the hang of the projectile and get used to knowing when to use it, the bison will soon become a common secondary in your day-to-day -day loadouts. Use the bison. Do it. It'll be worth it. At least, maybe for a little bit. And now that I have shown you how to use it, 
there should be no problem. Maybe. Hopefully. Probably. Anyways, use whatever you find fun. But have fun disintegrating your enemies with the most righteous of cattle, the righteous bison. Yo! We got one! Actually managed to get a bison kill in this map. 